the president's proposed budget does not have anywhere near the amount of money and environmentalists were hoping to get for the restoration of the Florida Everglades. So what's the next step? Senator Marco Rubio came to CBS 4 today to talk with Jim DeFeedy about that. Did, did the president betray Florida by not putting the money in? No, I think what happens is they come up with this budget and they want to get under a spending limit. And so in order to prioritize some things, you've got to make other budget line items less. I have a long list of projects, including democracy program in Cuba, that have been cut. It doesn't mean that's where it's going to wind up. The problem with it is that under the earmarks rules that we now have, that's the ceiling. That's as high as we can go. So the only way we can supplement that 60, there's two things that need to happen. Ideally, the White House would amend their budget request and increase that number a little higher, maybe not the full 200 million, which we need, but higher. And then second is we can do something called additional funding for approved projects that wouldn't be specifically delineated for the Everglades. But if we can get that number of additional funding high enough, a percentage of that will be for the Everglades and could get us close to or but at the 200 million. But wasn't this the argument that that uh, Rick Scott made in running for the Senate and that DeSantis made in running for governor that they have this close relationship with the president and they'll be able to help bring home these sort of dollars, exactly this sort of funding for the Everglades because of their relationship to the president, it does seem as if the president turned his back on them. Well, that's not the budget. In essence, that's not what's going to be funded. That is the president's proposed budget. Now the work of Congress, which has, as we discussed constitutionally, the power to appropriate, now it's up for Congress to step forward, make that happen, ensure we have the support of the administration to do two things, increase the number from 60 to something higher, but more importantly, openly advocate and push. Because if we turn over this money, um, it's not earmarked to the Army Corps of Engineers. Let's say we turn over 300, you know, the number's 300. They then decide how much of that to apportion to different places. We want to see a significant percentage of that added on to the 60 or 70 billion so that we get to the full 200 that we need to get this moving forward. So the work now begins. We're going to get, you know, we're going to work real hard at the appropriations level in both the House and Senate. And I believe, and the White House has already expressed a willingness to work with us to get that number higher. But if the, the president disappointed on the funding for Everglades restoration. Another promise that was made during the campaign season was to guarantee there be no offshore oil drilling in Florida, off the Atlantic coast, or off the Gulf Coast. The president is, is going to be announcing soon his plans as it relates to offshore oil drilling. Are you confident that he will come back with a plan that does not include offshore oil drilling in Florida, or are you concerned that there may be in there? I'm vigilant, obviously, because the Department of Interior and others weigh in on this situation, and I know that Senator Scott's involved in these conversations, and we are in the House delegation. It's a pretty strong consensus in, in our delegation that we don't want in Florida, including House and Senate members, Republicans and Democrats, that we want this, uh, the, the, the current limitations to be extended for a significant period of time. I have a bill that does it. And I should say we're vigilant, but I'm confident that at the end of this process, that consensus will be respected. But you're not confident that the president will, will say it in the coming No, weeks. I am. I'm, I'm just vigilant, obviously, because, again, when it gets down to that level, I mean, the notion that the president is personally involved in drawing that up, I mean, the agency is at Interior is going to play a big role in making that decision. So we will interact with the White House to make sure the word gets down that they don't want to see this at the front. I'd, I'd rather win that battle at the front end than at the back end, but we'll win it. Oil drilling in the Everglades, that's suddenly come up. Um, where do you stand on whether or not we should be drilling for oil in the Everglades? Look, I, there's existing exploration rights that people may have legal rights to, to do, and the courts will decide that. There's, uh, I don't know what the status of that court case is at this moment. There was some talk today that there might have been a mistake in the court ruling, somebody said. But that said, uh, that the court actually said it was a mistaken mm -hmm. ruling. But um, by and large, I'd prefer it not. And, 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 and I think that if, if, to the extent that there aren't existing leases there now, new ones should be scrutinized and perhaps not even necessary at this point. And, and if it in any way impedes the restoration work that we're working on, then I would be opposed to it. I, I am against anything that slows down Everglades restoration. We've begun to gain momentum. We've got to finish it. This is, we, we've got to do it now. We cannot afford a one or two year lull or any projects that get in the way of it. Staying with the environment for a section, the president also wants to cut funding for the EPA by more than 30 percent. His new pick to be the EPA administrator, Andrew Wheeler, has been cutting back on regulations, going to continue to cut back on regulations. Andrew Wheeler was a former coal lobbyist. Was he a good choice for EPA? Secretary? I think Andrew will do a good job. And I don't think the fact that you work for an industry makes it impossible for you to be fair in the decisions that you make. Just because you're reducing regulations doesn't mean you're doing harm to the environment. It depends which ones you're eliminating. Over time, these, these regulations begin to stack up. Some do not make sense. Some do not have a 
cost-benefit analysis that justify them. But I think all of us, I would hope, share the goal of having clean water and clean air and dealing with anything. Look in Florida, the water issues are our number one state issue. They're economic, they're not just environmental. We've seen the impact of green, blue-green algae. We've seen red tide. We've seen the debates we're having now about releases from Lake Okeechobee and, and the management of that water and what it can mean to the future if, if there is uh, an overabundance of water that has to be released during the middle of the summer when there's algae in Lake Okeechobee. So my view of it is it depends on, I think you can reduce a significant amount of the regulatory uh, burden without without harming the environment so long as you're reducing the right ones and not ones that actually make a difference. Do you think cutting the budget by 30 percent is a good idea? Well, again, I'd have to see the details of the agency's budget, but I think all federal agencies, for the most part, could afford a diet in terms of how much they're spending. Jim and Senator Rubio sp spoke at length on various topics, and you can see their full interview this Sunday at 1130 on Facing South Florida right here on CBS4.